Now, US President Donald Trump, whose rhetoric and policies have inflamed the Muslim community, hosted his first iftar dinner at the White House to celebrate Ramadan. But as Diane Estabrook reports, the event is drawing sharp criticism from Muslim groups. At the White House Wednesday night, President Donald Trump and guests observed the Muslim tradition of breaking a day-long fast during Ramadan by sharing a meal. Tonight we give thanks for the renewed bonds of friendship and cooperation we have forged with our valued partners from all across the Middle East. The White House wouldn't say who received these 40 invitations, but the Council on American Islamic Relations said none of their members got one. How can we say no to that? So they held a counter dinner across the street in Lafayette Park. It's not an American Muslim event. And really, it just shows that this administration is not willing to reach out to American Muslims. President Trump's contentious relationship with the Muslim community began during his campaign and deteriorated immediately after taking office with a series of travel bans that targeted Muslim-majority countries. No hate, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. The proposed ban sparked protests and outrage in cities across America. The U.S. Supreme Court will soon begin hearing legal challenges to them. Last year, President Trump drew additional criticism for being the first president in recent history to break the tradition of inviting Muslim leaders to the White House during Ramadan. The Quran teaches that Islam is a commitment to live in peace. Hillary Clinton as First Lady hosted the first holiday dinner in 1996 as a way of reaching out to the Muslim world. Both presidents, George Bush and Barack Obama, continued the tradition. In honoring these familiar values together of peace and charity and forgiveness, we affirm that whatever our faith, we're all one family. President Trump did strike a more conciliatory note with the Muslim community last month when he extended a greeting at the beginning of Ramadan. But some Muslims wish the president would extend that kind of geniality to his policies. Diane Estabrook, Al Jazeera, Washington. Zainab Chowdhury is a spokeswoman for the Council on American Islamic Relations. Joins me now from Baltimore via Skype. Good to have you with us live on Al Jazeera. Uh, many of your members, associates, colleagues have been demonstrating about this iftar dinner. Had you been invited? Thank you for having me, Sahil. Uh, no, I had not been invited. And even had I been, I would not have attended. I think any individual any self-respecting Muslim who values their identity as a Muslim uh, would not have been uh, compelled to be in that room or have a seat at that table. So what do you achieve uh, in terms of demonstrating, e either whether it be outside the White House or in other areas uh, outside government buildings, about this particular dinner? Well, it's more symbolic than anything else, but it also sends a strong point to Mr. Trump. You know, this is a, a president who... Um, really looks at numbers and figures, and he likes to have the most number of people, you know, in any given setting who are supporting him. And I think it really was, um, it sent a strong message that there were more people outside at the real iftar outside of the White House than at the non-iftar inside of the house. Um, the fact that American Muslims were not only invited, but also the fact that it was predominantly targeted towards diplomatic uh, from Muslim-majority countries, the vast majority of whom, I'm sure, had, you know, some level of wealth or degree, I think, it, or money, it, I think it reflects the fact that, you know, President Trump has historically prioritized his own interests. And it's extremely distasteful that he would leverage, um, you know, one of the most holiest months of the year here for Muslims globally around the world to capitalize on this opportunity to promote his own agenda and, you know, further alienate American Muslims, even the Muslim who who founded American Muslims for Trump was not invited. And I think that that in itself sends a strong message. Uh, then I'm going to play devil's advocate and say that perhaps he has seen partially the error of his ways. He's trying to offer an olive branch. Isn't it worth at least giving him that potential um, benefit of the doubt? You know, as an American Muslim, as a practicing Muslim who strongly believes in 
miracles, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. I don't discount the power of miracles. Um, but it, I, I believe it's a bit of a stretch to think that Mr. Trump has miraculously had a change of heart and all of a sudden has goodwill in his heart towards Muslims and is trying to extend an olive branch, especially considering the fact that historically his policies, his appointments to key top level uh, cabinets have been individuals who have a long leg legacy and long history, long record of being Islamophobic in nature or having ties to Islamophobic groups. Um, this is a president who has implemented a Muslim ban, a discriminatory ban that specifically targets individuals from Muslim majority countries. He has gone on record to say he supports the total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. If he is genuinely interested in extending extending an olive branch, he can begin by rescinding um, you know, some of those appointments, by um, canceling the Muslim ban, by reaching out to American Muslims. Uh, mainstream American Muslims and having open conversations about what having our communities be part of the larger fabric of society in the United States looks like. And you don't okay. do that by inviting the diplomatic corps. Okay, we said just hold it there for one second. Let's just listen to what else the president had to say just a few hours ago. To the Muslims around the world, Ramadan Mubarak. In gathering together this evening, we honor a sacred tradition of one of the world's great religions. For the Islamic faithful, the iftar dinner marks the end of the daily period of fasting and spiritual reflection that occurs throughout the holy month of Ramadan. Iftars mark the coming together of families and friends to celebrate a timeless message of peace, clarity, and love. Interesting that he actually described Islam as one of the great religions, words perhaps we would never have uh, thought would, would uh, come from his mouth. Uh, but certainly gives even those diplomats in that room the chance to bend his ear. Perhaps it was just a good opportunity as well for them to listen to what he had to say and, and perhaps... Um, say and reflect what many Muslims uh, across the U.S. are saying, uh, as well as the international core? You know, we hope so, but I'm not optimistic. It's hard to be optimistic, especially when we know actions speak louder than words. And just recently, the United States relocated the embassy from, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in Israel. Um, you know, this is a very sensitive you know, uh, move that has alienated much of the Muslim world um, and has, you know, really incinerated or in, exacerbated, uh, you know, ties between um, Jews and Muslims in that part of the world and globally, really. I think that, you know, our actions speak louder than words. Words can be very prettily decorated and, uh, you know, said on a stage. But I think the way that we actually implement policy and we shape um, you know, a narrative of what it means to be uh, welcoming to Muslims and hospitable to Muslims, um, I think that speaks much louder. And unfortunately, historically, his track record doesn't speak well. And it's going to take more than, you know, those remarks for us, for, for American Muslims to receive the message that this is a president who is genuinely interested in our well-being, in our interests, and um, in making sure that, you know, our rights are protected and we are part of the American fabric in, in, in our country. Well, we shall see uh, how this all plays out uh, in the future. For the moment, Zainab Chowdhury, thanks so much for joining us from Baltimore. Thank you for having me.